So in this video, I'm going to start with a new series, and I call it uh, Solve Problems. And my very first problem and this, and under this series is on the binomial distribution. So the way I will approach this uh, type of video is that I'm going to show a faster way of solving the problem and then on the latter part of the video I'm going to explain why such approach w is uh, working. So let's take for example the problem here. So at first if this is given in a test we have no idea yet whether it will fall under a binomial distribution. But for those who are already familiar with the structure of a binomial distribution, they could easily spot whether the problem is a binomial distribution. So let's read the problem. It says, if a student randomly guesses in a 10 multiple choice test or questions, find the probability that the student gets exactly seven correct answers. Each question has five possible choices. If this is the first time that you have seen this problem, we need to make sure we have, so the first thing that you have to do is to check if this will fall under binomial distribution, and how do we check? So you need to consider the characteristics of a binomial distribution. So according to the following, for a distribution to be binomial, first is each trial must have two possible outcomes or the outcomes can be reduced to only two outcomes. These outcomes can be considered as either success or a failure. In this example, as we can see, if we answer A, multiple choice item, it's either we could get the question right or we get or we have the wrong answer. So there are only two possible answers. It's either you get it or you don't. So first condition is satisfied. But we should not stop there because there are also other conditions to be checked. The second one is it has fixed number of trials. Since we are answering only 10 questions, then the number of trials, which is in this case, the trials are the questions we have 10 and 10 is a fixed number of trials, a fixed number of questions. So condition 2 is satisfied. The next one is the outcomes of each trial are independent of each other. This means your chances of getting the question right on a specific question is not affected by your chance or chances of getting the other questions right. This independence will lead to have the probability of a success be the same in each trial. Like in this example, each question has five possible choices. This means that your chances of getting the correct answer is one out of five. Suppose you already answered question number one. The chance of you getting the correct answer in number 1 is 1 over 5. When you go to number 2, the chance of you getting the correct answer is also 1 over 5. So the preceding question did not affect your chance of getting the question number 2 right. That is the meaning of independent of each other. And it also shows how the probability of success is the same in each trial. So now that we know that this problem is under a binomial distribution, we can now proceed on solving the problem. To find the probability of a random variable x in a binomial distribution, we will be using the following formula. So as we can see, this is the probability of a certain x is the combination nx p where p is the probability of success 1 minus p is the probability of failure and on the exponents 
we see x where x is the number of successes and n minus x is the number of failures. In this example, what we want is to get exactly seven correct answers. That means our x here is seven and the n minus x is equal to three, which is basically the 10 questions minus seven. This is n and this is x. So the solution will be the probability of x equals 7 because 7 correct answers is equal to combination n, the number of trials, 10, the number of questions, and x, the number of successes, the probability 1 fifth, or you can write 0.2 raised to 7, and then probability of failure is 1 minus 1 fifth or simply 4 over 5 raised to n minus 7 equals 3. You can simplify this further and write it as combination 10, 7, 1 fifth raised to 7 and 4 fifth raised to 3. And in most courses, calculators will be allowed to compute for the certain for this value. So simply get your calculator and compute 10 combination 7 times 1 fifth raised to 7 times 4 fifth raised to 3. The answer to that is the probability that the student gets exactly 7 correct answers. And the answer is 7.86 times 10 to the negative 4. If we change this into a different form, it means the 1, 2, 3, 4, that will give us 0 0.000786 or 0 0.0008. So that's how small your chances of getting exactly 7 correct answers. That's about 0.08% only. So if you will go to a class and there's a quiz with 10 multiple choice questions with 5 choices, and you have no idea on how to answer each question, you cannot do process of elimination, and you just guess for the answers, your chances of getting exactly seven, and in normal grading, this, the passing score is just 0.08%. Okay, so that's how we solve a binomial distribution question or problem. Remember, our first, uh, the first thing that we have to do is to check whether the problem will fall under a binomial distribution, and that is to check the four conditions I enumerated earlier. And once we know that this is where the problem is already a binomial distribution, then we can proceed in making use of the formula and find the desired number. Also earlier, I mentioned that I'll try to make sense of the formula and why does it work in binomial distribution. So let's take a look at it this way. So we were trying to answer question, 10 questions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now for each question, our chances of getting the correct answer is 1 over 5, because there are 5 choices, and getting the incorrect answer, or getting it wrong is 4 over 5. Since our goal is to find the chances that you will get exactly 7 correct answers, that means you have 7 places in which you have 1 fifth chance. And one particular case would be is to get all the first 7 or the first 7 correct and the other three, eight, nine, and ten, to be wrong. Okay, but this is ju just one case. That is why we have to take the combination ten taken seven. That means out of ten questions, we can select any of the seven places. Another case could be 
we got the first three wrong and the rest of the seven incorrect or correct rather and that's another case but it's very difficult for us to count and just list down all those possible cases but what we know is out of 10 we need to get 7 so 10 combination 7 but why is it not a permutation and just a combination it is not under permutation because when you try to interchange for instance 4 over 5 in number 9 and 4 over 5 you are not totally or you are not actually creating another combination because we still have 4 over 5 and 4 over 5 that is still the same in terms of what we have for number 9 and 10 it's 4 over 5 and 4 over 5 so what about the 1 fifth raised to 7 and 4 fifth raised to 3 7 is basically the number of 1 fifth we have in the 1 to 10 questions to get 7 correct answers we should have 7 1 over 5 and that's 1 fifth times 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 1 fifth which is equal to 1 fifth raised to 7 and then 4 fifth times 4 fifth times 4 fifth that is our 4 fifth raised to 3 and remember to get the probability we have to multiply all the probabilities for each trial or for the trials okay so that's why the solution using the formula is really correct okay so when you encounter a binomial distribution problem if you are already familiar with the concept you can immediately proceed to the use of the formula just make sure that you know what are the values needed say for instance what is n the number of trials x is the number of success how many do you want in this case we want x to be 7 p is the probability of success 1 fifth because we have 1 over 5 chance of getting the the answer correct x because this is the number of success that you want so 7 1 minus p complement because the total probability is 1 so if p is the probability of success then the failure is 1 less p and this will be raised to n minus x or basically what remains from the n when we remove the x so that is why n minus x now for those who will be asking why is there a zero in this formula it simply means that if the number x is no longer within the sample space say x is already 11 but we only have 10 questions so automatically the probability is already zero okay so that's for now how to solve binomial distribution problems and in a different video i'll be showing the other uh, examples on binomial distribution also i'll be making one for hypergeometric and poisson distribution okay